Hello there, I'm Jimmy Vegas and welcome to the 10th video in a series of game development tutorials on how to make your own 3D platform game in Unity 6. In this tutorial we'll be covering falling off and restarting the level. Remember to subscribe and click the notification bell to stay up to date with every tutorial I upload. Feel free to leave a comment and drop a like. I also have a Patreon page where you could help be a part of this channel and you'll also find all the scripts and the assets to this series there too along with plenty of other things. You can also now join as a free member. Now on with the tutorial. So the idea of what we need to do with this is when we fall off we need to reset everything and then play the level again. Now that involves several scenes and this is where scene management will come into play quite a lot and we have to kind of have a bit of forethought as to what scenes we need. So ultimately what we're going to have is a splash screen, uh, we'll have a main menu, and uh, we'll have a credit scene, we'll have a reset scene, which is the one we're going to be focusing on today, and then we'll have all the levels. So let's start by creating just the scenes so we can see how these affect the game development itself. So if we go to scenes, you'll see we have one sample scene, and that's the scene we're working in right now. We're going to change that in just a moment. So what we'll do is we will hold control, press N, and we'll create a new scene. And we just need the basic built in so we can create that. Uh, if you need to save the scene you're currently in then do so. What we'll do is we'll then file and save as and we'll just call this, um, in fact, let's go into scenes and we'll call this splash screen and then sample scene that we have there let's rename this so press F2 or right click and rename we'll call this Level 01. So level 01 now is that scene we've just been creating. Now we have this splash screen, hold control, press D, and let's rename this to main menu. Let's hold control, press D again, and let's rename this to credits. And finally, let's hold control, press D again, and we'll have this as reset scene. And this is the one that resets all of our levels. So like I say, this is the one we're going to be working in uh, today. So let's make sure we double click in reset scene and then go to file and let's go to build profiles. If we go down here to scene list or up here uh, we can see all the scenes here. Now depending on what version of Unity you're in you can kind of drag and drop scenes into this list but you can see that level 01 is currently scene 0 and we don't want that. Scene 0 is always the main scene that's run. So try dragging and dropping splash screen into here and then reset scene and then main menu and then credits. Now what we've got here is five scenes listed from zero to four. Let's reorder these in the actual order that we need. So splash screen move to the top. Main menu should be next. Credits after that. Reset scene after that and then level one starts at scene four. Remember these values, they are important. So now we can close that down. And what we need to do is make reset scene take us back to our level, basically. So in order to do that, let's add a uh, game component, uh, UI, uh, sorry, game object to UI. And let's add a raw image. And we'll just make this completely black just in case. So stretch it, zero, 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 zero. Uh, don't need to worry about the canvas too much about scaling because this scene is never really going to be seen. This is just a precaution. So if we go to game view, we should see it is completely black. That's fine. Uh, but if you want to, feel free to scale again and set everything uh, as intended. I will just uh, for sanity's sake. And let's save that scene. So the script we're going to need here. Uh, we will modify later on in the series because we do need it to be a bit more dynamic than what we're going to do. But right now, all we need to know is that scene four is where we need to respawn. So let's go to our script. Let's go to right click, uh, create and a new script. And we'll call this respawn level. And in here, we're going to add in something different, something that we haven't done before with coding. We need to add in a namespace. So at the top where we have using Unity Engine, you need to go under and type using Unity Engine dot, if I can spell engine right, engine dot scene management with a semicolon. We can get rid of void update and we can get rid of the annotations. 
And the idea of what we want to happen is this scene is going to place us straight back into the scene that we were in, effectively resetting that scene. So when we fall off, we reset and we respawn. So we can say scene manager dot load scene and in brackets four, because if you remember, scene four was our level that we've been building. So we can save that script now and we will modify that so it doesn't always say four a little later on in this tutorial series. Uh, head back into Unity, give it a moment just to compile. It's taking just a second there, but there we go, I can see it working on it. And what we need to do is just attach this script pretty much to any object in the scene. It doesn't really matter what object it goes on to, as long as the script is always going to run. So we can drag and drop onto main camera, for example. And if we save, what will happen is that when we press play on this scene, even though we're in the respawn level scene, it will take us to scene four, which is our level. So give it a moment just to do that. I feel like I say this quite a lot. And there we go. Straight in. So we know that that script is now working. So we can use that to our advantage back on our actual level that we've been building. So it's now level zero one. And if you remember with the finish line, what we did is when we interacted with it, something happened. Well, we're going to do the exact same thing here. So we could effectively reuse that script, but for a slightly different purpose. And I'm going to import another sound effect into our folder. So I'm going to drag and drop this fall sound. And as always, head to the pinned comment or the link in the description and you can download it for free. Just make sure you unzip it. And let's go to level controls. Let's go to audio, effects, and level jingle, hold control, press D. And let's rename to fall sound and then drag and drop the fall sound onto there like so uh, we're not playing on awake so that's all fine so now what we'll do is let's go to our scripts folder and we have level finish so what we'll do is we'll take level finish hold control and press d and what that will do is it will create a duplicate of it called level finish one and you should get an error down the bottom as expected, that's perfectly normal, and that's, that's what we expect to see. Uh, we'll call this as fall off, and then open that script called, it doesn't want to work, does it? Why is it not changed the name? Fall off. It doesn't want to do it. Okay, so let's go <laughs> into the actual script itself. There we go, it is called fall off, it just didn't like to update the name. So you can see up there, it is called fall off. So rename it head into the script, and you can instantly see there are many errors here. That's because the class name is not the same as the script name. So if we change this to say fall off, it will remove every error. Now, a couple of things we do need to change about this. We don't need to play the idle animation and we don't need to turn the player controls off. So we can remove both of those lines of code, which also means that we don't need this player control variable that can go. The level jingle is going to now be, instead of an audio source called level jingle, it's going to be fall sound. So if we change that variable name, it means that we've got to change this here. So fall sound. And we do want the level background music to stop. Uh, we do want to play the sound, obviously. And then we do need to fade out. But we also need to change scenes. Now, what we'll need to do is add in the namespace once again so using unity engine dot scene management if i can spell engine right again and what we have to do is we have to use um, a coroutine so much like we did with the player controls when we reset the jump we want to wait um, just a couple of in fact two seconds before we change the scene so what we'll do is after void on trigger enter, we'll go down a little bit and we'll say I enumerator. And you'll notice as you do that, it's added in at the top in the namespace system.collections. It did it on the play controls as well. It's just easier to see it now because this script is smaller. And we'll say respawn. 
open close bracket, open curly bracket, and then we'll say yield return new wait for seconds, and then in brackets, how long is your fade out? Well, my fade out is two seconds, so I'm going to wait for two seconds. If yours is one second, you would wait for one second. After that, we can say that we want to have scene manager dot load scene and in brackets three this will more than likely always remain three because scene three is always going to be our respawn scene so next thing we need to do is after this where we've had the background music off false sound has played fade out has started we need to say start co routine and in brackets the name of the co-routine so re spawn open close bracket close bracket semicolon and save if you have problems with the script as always pin comment go download it for free so let's now head back into unity and let's establish how exactly we use this script well the idea is that when we fall off that's when we want to respawn so therefore we should put a massive trigger underneath our level that captures our player to say, oh, now we need to respawn. So in order to do that, what we'll do is go to game object, 3D object, cube. I'm gonna set it back into the center of the scene. And I'm gonna make it large, large enough to cover all of this area here. So let's go to scale and let's have this as 30 by 30. Let's move it into position, just make sure that there's no way that we couldn't not fall through it, and then drag it down just a little bit to about there. And what we'll say is, we'll call this death capture. So it's capturing our player. We then need to tick is trigger, and then we need to drag and drop the fall off script onto there, and head down here and set those three variables. So the fall sound, is going to go right there. BGM is the main BGM object, not BGM1. And fade out is in our canvas, which is right there. And that should do the trick. So the final thing to do is turn off the mesh renderer. So you can't see the weird gray box beneath us. So now if we press play, we should be able to effectively complete the level as normal or if we make a mistake, we fall. There's more things that we could effectively do to this, uh, and we'll see if we can further on, but we just want to make sure that we can reset this level. There we go. Perfect. And even if we collect some gems and then fall off, there we go. We still have 200, so we need to reset them. So that means the one last little bit of code that we need in here is to reset whatever we have in uh, score control. So we can say, much like we did in gem control, where we said score control dot total score uh, plus equals whatever gem score is, we go into fall off and we say uh, score control dot total score equals zero semicolon and save so that effectively means now that this level has to be completely reset so fingers crossed we shouldn't have a problem at all give it a moment as always good old unity there we go it's doing its stuff now so back in let's press play Let's collect a gem, fall off, and make sure that our score does indeed reset when we respawn in the level. Any moment now. There we go. Right, so we're in. So let's collect some gems. Let's fall off. So you can see the score was reset as we uh, did it. So 100, 400, but it resets there. If you're happy for it to reset there, that's completely fine. If not, here's another trick that we can do. Let's take this, let's take it out of there, and let's put it in respawn level before scene manager. So there's different ways that you can achieve the same effect, just depends how you want it to be visualized in your game.
As I said, if you're happy for the score to disappear like it did there, keep it the way it was. If you want your score to stay there and only reset when everything is black and faded out, then you do this method that we've just done now. So if we press play, we should be able to see our score still on the screen as we're falling and fading out, and it will reset back to zero when we get back into the game. Let's have a quick look. This is one thing I don't like about Unity these days. It takes so long to kind of compile a script and get into the game. What takes so long, Unity? What takes so long? Anyway, let's collect a gem and fall off. So score still says 100. And now it's reset back to zero. There we go. Perfect. And we can still finish the level as intended. Awesome. So next tutorial, what we'll cover is going to be a time limit. So basically, if we run out of time, we have to reset the level. Um, it's a really cool concept creating time limits in levels. Uh, you don't necessarily have to do it, but it's a concept that I would like to add into this game. So remember to subscribe and click the notification bell to stay up to date with every tutorial, and I'll see you in the next one.